I don't know about you, but I've made a few mistakes in my lifetime. I like to think that I've learned from my mistakes, and I'm hoping that maybe you might learn something from my mistakes too. Today, I'm going to share with you my biggest travel mistakes I've made so far. Hey y'all, it's Christy the Gen X Gypsy and welcome. As I said in the intro, today I'm going to share with you my seven biggest travel mistakes that I've made so far because let's face it, we're all lifelong learners and we will all continue to make mistakes in life because nobody is perfect. These are in no particular order and I will start with what I think probably most people would think is the biggest mistake that you can make in travel and that is missing a flight. Now, at the time that I missed my flight, I was actually living in Portland, Oregon, but I had come home to visit in Eastern North Carolina, and I was flying out of our small regional airport here in New Bern, North Carolina, and I made the dumb mistake of thinking that I did not need to get to the airport an hour before the flight left because it was such a small airport and I had TSA pre-check and why would I ever need to get there and just sit in that tiny little airport on those hard plastic seats for an entire hour before my flight left. Well, <laughs> there is a reason that they put for you to be at the airport an hour ahead of time and it's not just to get through security. It's because they have to get all of their paperwork done and even if you've checked in online and you are planning on checking a bag, that does not guarantee that they still keep somebody up at the front desk. Now granted, I was furious with the airline at the time that this happened, but ultimately it really was my own damn fault for not getting to the airport in time. I had no good excuse. I just didn't want to end my vacation 20 minutes earlier. You live and you learn. The second mistake is one that I made a little more recently and I've shared this in a previous video and that is not checking the weather before we left on a road trip. My mom and I drove from North Carolina up to upstate New York to see my daughter graduate from college in Albany, New York. And we decided to do a road trip from North Carolina along the Eastern seaboard up to Cape Cod and Nantucket. Well, it was the week of Memorial Day and we thought the weather was gonna be pretty nice and warm and like typical May weather in North Carolina. Well, when we got to Cape Cod and Nantucket, it was freezing. And I mean literally freezing. It was 30 degrees for two days while we were there and neither of us had packed appropriate clothing. My mom had at least a heavier rain jacket than I did, but all I had was like a three quarter length sweater. I think I had a very thin rain jacket. Those were pretty much the coverings that I had. I ended up buying a sweatshirt at the Cape Cod National Seashore Visitor Center, which I love to this day and I'm so glad I had a reason to get it. But the whole day we were on Nantucket, we were freezing. So make sure that you check the weather, no matter what the season is and what your assumptions may be about what the weather should be like. Always, always, always check the weather. My third mistake was when we were in Paris, and that is to download an offline map onto my phone to use while I'm out doing sightseeing. I had signed up to have international cell service while I was in Europe, but for whatever reason, Verizon and I couldn't get it to work the entire time I was in Paris. And we ended up somewhere over by, I think over by Montmartre, and we were trying to find a particular restaurant or site. I'm not exactly sure what it was at the time, and I would kept trying to pull things up on my Google map. I just couldn't find it, and it wasn't, that my phone wasn't cooperating, and we just didn't have anything that we could look at to really figure out where we were. We weren't super, super lost. I had no issue asking for directions or help, but it would have been nice to have had a map to be able to look at. And I'm kind of a map person. I like to be able to see where I'm going. So for the future, that is definitely something I will be doing when I go visit international bigger cities, especially. This next mistake, let's just say I don't know what I was thinking, but it did cost me a little bit of money. I don't know why I had in my head that going through security in a foreign country wasn't going to apply to the same rules as 
going through security in the U.S. And I, I guess the rationale that I had in my head was that unopened bottles of liquor weren't considered liquids. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Just definitely a dumb dumb moment. But I had a full bottle of Peruvian Pisco, which is a liqueur that's made, or actually a liquor, it's more like a whiskey, that is made in Peru and they actually make a drink called a Pisco Sour. And I was bringing it back as a souvenir for the person who had been house sitting for me while I was gone. And um, yeah, I go through security and they're like, do you have any liquids in your bag? And I'm like, oh yeah, I have this, you know, wrapped up souvenir thing. And they're like, yeah, you can't, you can't carry that on. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, so they did ask me if I wanted to go ahead and drink it right there at security and, and finish it up before I got on the plane. And I, I said, no, no, thank you. You guys just enjoy it. So if you are planning on bringing back a bottle of liquor or wine or something like that from wherever you are visiting, just make sure that you pack it in your checked luggage and you don't try to bring it through security, no matter what country you're in. The next mistake is a, another road trip fail, sort of a road trip fail. We actually flew to California, but then I rented a car for my daughter and I to take the 101 down through Big Sur all the way to San Luis Obispo because she was checking out Cal Poly down there. Well, I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I thought the 101 was gonna be more like like Oregon's 101, which is kind of a normal state highway. It is two lanes for a significant part of it, but you still go like 45 or 50, sometimes, you know, 60 miles an hour on the road without any problem. Well, the 101 from San Francisco down to San Luis Obispo is, um, shall we say, extremely curvy. I've seen the pictures of it, of course, which was one of the reasons that I wanted to do that drive. However, it did not occur to me that it would take significantly longer to do that drive than what I was thinking. I thought based on the mileage and everything that, you know, it might take us two or three hours to get down there. It was a six hour drive from I believe somewhere between five and six hours and very limited cell phone coverage, especially after we left Monterey Bay. It was gorgeous, but there were very few places to stop for gas or potties. And by the end of it, there were a few things that we would have liked to have actually stopped and seen, but she and I both had to pee so bad that we were like, nope, got to keep on going, got to keep on going because we don't know where we're going to find another rest stop and the sun was starting to set by this time. It was gorgeous, but I wish I had done better research on what it really entails to drive that part of the 101 in California. So that mistake has led me to do more research into the adventures that I'm going to go on. I like to fly by the seat of my pants a lot of times, but I need to weigh that spontaneity with some responsibility sometimes. This next mistake isn't necessarily one that will affect everybody, but for those of us that have motion sickness, you'll know what I'm talking about. My trip to Guatemala, which was one of my first international trips that I did when I started traveling again, we were picked up in Guatemala City by a shuttle at the airport and driven over to Antigua. I did not realize that the roads in Guatemala, even the main highways, we're going to be so curvy. And when you're thrown into the middle or back of an airport shuttle and driven two hours on super curvy roads after you've come off of flying on a plane for, oh gosh, I think about 12 hours. Who? let's just say I was not feeling super great by the time we got to the hotel. The first thing I did the next morning was go out and buy some Dramamine because I could not believe I had not brought any with me. Pretty much every time I got in a moving vehicle while we were in Guatemala, I had taken Dramamine. It was a lot of mountainous roads, just, just didn't realize it. So now I just make sure that I always travel with Dramamine because you never know when you're gonna be on curvy roads or when you might get the opportunity to go out and deep sea fish. 
Before we get to my last travel mistake and what I think is my biggest travel mistake, I'd love to hear from you what your biggest travel mistakes have been. If you could let me know in the comments below, I'd really appreciate it. And while you're there, if you haven't had a chance to tap that thumbs up button, I would love to get a like from you. For my last big travel mistake and what I truly think is my biggest mistake that I've made. And that is not booking my flight with my travel package when I went to Iceland. Unfortunately, the day that I was leaving Portland to fly to Iceland, and I had to fly from Portland to Seattle, and then a direct flight from Seattle to Iceland, both Seattle and Portland ended up having snowstorms. So I missed two days of my trip in Iceland because I had not booked my airfare through the travel package that I had booked in Iceland. Now the reason I booked a travel package in Iceland is because they had phenomenal deals on the hotel and the tours that I was going to do, but I didn't want to do their airfare thing. And because I hadn't booked my airfare through the same company, they basically told me, there was nothing they could do and it just was a matter of me not showing up for my tours when I had originally booked them. So they rebooked a couple of things for me. Overall, I missed two full days of my trip. So what was supposed to be a five day trip to Iceland turned into a three day trip to Iceland. It was really, really quite a bummer. I'm just grateful that these are the only things that I have that I really consider big travel mistakes. Honestly, it was really hard for me to even come up with this list because I think I have a propensity of reframing negative things that happen into a positive memory. So I don't remember the negative things or if I do, I'm clearly not remembering them as negative as they might have felt or been in the moment that they were happening. And that may be the best thing you can do when you're reflecting on your travel mistakes because not only learning from your mistakes and making sure that you don't do the same thing in the future, but reflecting on what positive thing happened because you made that mistake. Like, did you meet a new person? Did you learn about a new part of a city because you didn't have a map? Did I get to enjoy my daughter's company for a longer period of time in the car together because it took longer to get down that road? I just think it's a fun little game to look at your mistakes and not only learn from that mistake, like duh, show up to the airport, on time, but also what good came out of making that mistake. I didn't show up to the airport on time, but I got to spend more time with my parents because I was there for another day. Reframing it in that way, I think just helps us make our mistakes seem a little more fun. I hope you've enjoyed learning about all of the mistakes that I've made as a traveler. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Was it? It was Pisco, I think. Hold on. And I don't know why you would bring bringing back liquid coffee. I don't know. That was not a good example. Not really making much sense right now. Go.